This is a short presentation on how to take good dermoscopic photos. Firstly, you need to make sure that both the scope and the camera or phone that you're using are charged. Make sure the end plate of the scope is clean on both sides. Dust on the inside of the end plate will get in the way and alter the focus. Remove any surface crust or scale from the lesion. Crust and scabs can be removed with a damp cloth. Scale may need to be gently picked off if it's loose or can be removed by tape stripping with adhesive tape that's stuck to the skin and peeled off. And this process is repeated three or four times until the tape comes away clear. Don't forget, you always need clinical photos of the lesion as well, both a localising photo and a close up. This is a link to some more details on taking clinical photos. Attach the phone to the adapter. If you're using a phone to take pictures, it's much easier to take good pictures using an adapter to attach the phone to the scope. Modern adapters are magnetic and very easy to use. However, you can hold the phone's camera up to the eyepiece without an adapter. If you're doing this, it's important to make sure the phone is level compared with the scope. If it's on an angle, it will be impossible to focus. You may need to get the patient to help by holding the scope still so you have two hands free to work the camera on the phone. If your phone has multiple cameras, you need to find out which one is the main camera for macro pictures. This is a matter of trial and error, but once you've identified the correct camera, you'll be able to line up the adapter over it straight away in future. On some phones with many cameras, there's more than one macro camera and you may have to cover up the other cameras with a piece of paper to stop it jumping between them. Turn on the scope and extend the end plate fully if you're using a phone. If you don't extend the end plate, you'll get shadows like this. Just extend the end plate to get rid of them. When using a camera, you ideally need to focus the scope first, but for a phone camera, it's best to simply fully extend the end plate. Attach the scope to the phone adapter combination, and before taking the photo, zoom in with the camera to remove as much of the black circle as the edges as possible while still being able to see the lesion. If you don't zoom the camera, you get a black border around the photo. If you're not using an adapter, it may be helpful to zoom in on the camera before holding it up to the eyepiece of the scope so that you can take the photo one handed. Always use liquid interface when taking photos. You can apply the fluid to either the skin or the scope, but please be careful if using contact fluid applied to the scope in case you get fluid into the body of the scope itself. An alcohol wipe to the skin is fine for flat lesions, unless they're on broken skin, in which case it stings, and alcohol gel or lubricating jelly can be used for raised lesions to make sure there's no air in between the skin and the contact plate. So for flat lesions, we tend to wet the skin with an alcohol wipe, but for raised ones, we use lots of viscous fluid. If you take the scope off, and then put it back on again to take a photo, you need to wipe the fluid away and reapply it afterwards in order to avoid bubbles. Try to avoid compressing any blood vessels on the surface. Ways to do this are to use a more viscous contact fluid such as lubricating jelly rather than alcohol gel, or to use polarised mode without direct skin contact. Try to make sure the measuring graticule is in the field of view and tap the part of the phone screen you want to focus on. Take photos in polarised and non-polarised mode for every lesion. If they look exactly the same, just save the best one. If they look different, as in this case, you need to save both. Select the best pictures. Make sure you have the clinical photos as well, localising and close up, and then upload them to the clinical system, resizing them on the way. If you have the photo saved on your desktop, you can open it in Paint, available on all Microsoft computers, and click on Resize. This lets you choose a percentage. 20% is usually about right, but you can check what the file size has been changed to by saving it, and then hovering over the icon or file name on your desktop. If you took the photo on your phone outside of an app, then you may be able to choose the file size when emailing it to yourself. But there are data protection issues when using your own phone and the BAD guidelines are helpful in this scenario. The best way is to take the phones within a compliant app. Most of the apps will automatically resize the photo for you.
There are lots of different apps available. But one example in the UK is Pando, which is free to use if you have an NHS Net email. We have a separate video on how to upload and use the Pando app. Consider taking dermoscopic photos on the patient's phone so they have a copy too, and if you want to use Accurix to upload them into the notes. If you want to use the photos for anything other than direct patient care, for example for teaching or for websites, then you should obtain written consent. The QR code below takes you to a, cons a suggested consent form you could use. All of this information is available on the PCDS website using the links below. For more information about choosing and using a scope and training to help you interpret what you see, please have a look at the PCDS website Demoscopy pages. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy using your dermatoscope as much as we do. So I'll wipe it again, get my dermatoscope, open it up, turn it on, attach my camera on the lesion, zoom in, not so far because I still need to have that there, tap on the lesion to focus, take my picture.